Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Good morning and good morning, good morning everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made to rejoice in his presence. In our midst, Deaconess Christina Jackson, she's going to share the word of God. Let's listen carefully and let's listen with a prayerful that God may talk with us this morning and this evening. Let's invite her. Over to you. Praise yes, the Lord, praise the Lord, sister. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. All honor and glory to Him. On behalf of Soul Winners Christian Center, the body of Christ, I just want to say welcome, welcome, Pastor Prakash and his wife. Welcome, everyone, this morning. Amen. This morning, your evening, welcome. So, this morning, I want to go into, we want to talk about trusting God in your pain. Amen. And the scripture is from 2 Corinthians 1. And we read on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father God, we praise you, God. We lift your holy name and high, Father. Oh God, we pray, oh God, that as I'm about to go into your word, it be less of me and more of you, God. As I decrease, you increase in me, oh God. Holy Spirit, speak through me, dear Father. Speak to me, speak to me as I'm about to give your word, God. I ask that you cover this broadcast in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this morning, we start from Second Corinthians chapter 1. And we go to um from from verse three down to verse ten. Amen. Amen. It says, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of our comfort. Blessed be the God. In your pain this morning, I want to tell you this morning that God is is going to comfort you during this time. There are times where we go to grief. Today is the 14th of um, October. It makes it two months since I lost my brother today. And I'm telling you, there's only thing that I could do is trust God. I know sometimes in our pain, in our sorrow, sometimes we want to ask God why. Even if someone hurts you, it's like you just can't see the light under the through the tunnel. You you you, you just you're so you're feeling so dark. You feel so lonely in your pain. This morning, I want to say, bless be God. Praise God in your pain this morning. Trust him and he's going to comfort you. Let's read on. It says, who comforts us in all our affliction? God comfort us in our troubles. He comforts us, even if we feel so distant. You know, sometimes you're hurting. I remember some pain that I went through in my life. And, you know, before I was really grounded in the word of God, before I really, I was a believer, I accepted Christ, but I never used to really spend so much time in the word of God as I do today. And brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm telling you, Get into the word of God, because when you're in certain situation, you can't hear anyone. You can't hear anyone else. You can't hear your peer, but you can hear God. God is going to remind you. The Holy Spirit is going to remind you of his word. Amen. So when you are in your troubles, um, I'm at verse four, who comforts us in our affliction. I'm reading from the ESV version so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction. So you see, when we are going through our trials and tribulation, we, we sometimes we just don't know why at that moment. And this is why we have to trust God because he knows what he's doing with us. He said, the psalmist said, Lord, I give you my heart. And this morning I'm telling you, give God your heart wholeheartedly in every situation. Put it up. Rest in God this morning. I'm asking you to Rest, put your trials and your troubles, all of your affliction, rest in God. Because God is bringing you out of something. 
And from my experience, what I've learned, I've had many people came to me who knew what I was going through, certain things in my life. And they have approached me, how was this? What did you do in that situation? How did you get out of it? And my answer to you is to trust and believe in God. Seek God. The Bible says in Matthew 6, 33, seek you first the kingdom of God. It's not just in, it's even in your pain. It's not just in your happy moment. You know, it's also in your pain. Seek God first and put God first, even in that pain. This morning, even me, I'm trusting God in my pain. You know, too, my brother was 27 years old. And up to this day, we don't know the cause of his death. Young, healthy, and he just dropped. And God knows I, he's my comfort. And during that time, six days before that, my husband lost his father. So in our household, we were experiencing two deaths. And brothers and sisters, I cannot explain that pain to you. But in that moment, we seek God and we trust God. We don't know why. And I haven't asked God why. Because I trust him. I believe in him. Amen. So I'm telling you, while you're in it, God is bringing your mess into a message. He is making your trials and tribulations so that you can comfort someone else. There's someone else who is waiting. There may be a crowd of people. There may be many unsaved. So when we ask God to use us, we don't know how we're asking him to use us. We don't know what that's going to be like. We don't know the pain that God is using you. He's Holding you, sometimes the best way that you can advise someone is by you experiencing it and knowing how that feels like so that you can bring someone out of that. So right here, Paul is saying, here he says, so that we may able to comfort those who are in any affliction. So in any pain, actually, because once you experience hurt and you experience pain and you experience sorrow, whatever situation other people other people are going through, you can testify because a testimony is burdened through your pain this afternoon. A testimony is burdened through your hurt. So here Paul is saying, trust God. God is all comfort. When you feel like you're alone, God is right there. He's just waiting on you to knock on the door. The Bible says, knock and the door will be open. Ask and you will receive. So God wants you to put, to rest in him and to put all that pain and all that anger and all that sorrow and all that hurt and just rest in him and allow him. He says, seek you first the kingdom of God and everything is going to be added on to you, meaning he's working it out. He's working it out. He's working out your pain this morning, this afternoon. He's working out your sorrow. So I'm asking you to seek God in your moment of pain. Even when it seems so dark and gloomy and you're in this dark room and you're looking around for the light, trust God. He is the light to our part this morning and this afternoon. He is the light to our part. So we need to trust him so that we can testify. When we have testimonies, when people are speaking of testimonies because they went through a thing, they went through something where they can trust God. They went through something and God, because of God, they overcame past then. So they're no longer in that pain and that sorrow. It's because you're resting in God. So this morning I'm asking to rest in him. Amen. He says, continue with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. So God is saying, with you going through what you're going through or what you've been through, now you're going to comfort someone with the same comfort that God gave you. The same comfort that you went, that God gave you, you now are going to pass on that same grace to the person who is in pain. So now you can testify because of God's comfort. Amen. So when you trust God and God comforts you, you now have to pass it on. It's just like grace. Grace is unmerited favor. We don't deserve it. But every day, the fact that I'm speaking to you this morning, it's because of God's grace. The fact that you're looking at me this morning and this afternoon, it's because of God's grace. So pass on the same grace that God gave you to others. It's the same comfort 
that God give you and God comfort you in your sorrow is the same comfort that you're going to pass on to someone else. Amen? Let's read on. Um, verse 5, it says, For as we share abundantly in Christ's suffering, you know, when Jesus, before he died on the cross, he went through some suffering. He was whipped, beaten, spat on. He went through some suffering. He was on the cross. My God. The nail in his hand, he suffered in his feet, on his head. All that pain, he suffered. That's how we suffer. So sometimes we go through that suffering. So for as we share abundantly in Christ's suffering, so through Christ we share abundantly in his comfort. So we share his pain, but we also share his comfort too. It's in the scripture. Amen. So we share his pain, his suffering, or we don't even know. Sometimes we think we have it really bad, and sometimes other people have it worse in the sense of, I can't imagine a nail in my hand. I really, really can't. You know, when I read about the story of before Jesus got on the cross, I wept. I cried. And even sometimes when I think of it, just a thought of the pain that Jesus endured right before he got on the cross, while he was on the cross, Tears come to my eyes because I, I I can't even phantom that pain. So I'm saying, you know, just like how we, we are suffering with Christ's um, sufferings, so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort. This word of God is, is, is amazing. Amazing. Sometimes we're reading a scripture and we don't even know why, but we trust that God is going to plug into us what he wants us to get from this scripture. And, you know, we're not going to remember every word in the word of God, every scripture where it's taken from. But when you are afflicted, when you are in trouble, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is going to remind you of that verse. And that verse is going to comfort you. And this is why we ought to trust God in everything that we do. We we you know before I not before I was a believer, but before I got grounded in the word of God, before I started plugging and really get into the word of God, I didn't even know how to answer to some of my pain. I used to ask God why? Why me? You know, but now as I'm a, as I'm grounded in the word of God, why not me? So my question is, why not you? Because you don't know. There may be someone who's suicidal. And you might be in pain and you're sorrow. But then because you came out of it, because God comforts you, and because you trust him and you rest, that pain, you can now save someone's life by God's comfort and passing on that comfort. Amen? So we're saying, so why not you this morning? Don't be sulked. Don't let your pain take over. Don't let your sorrow take over this morning. I'm asking God, let God take over. Trust him and let him take over so you can bless someone else, so that you can save someone else, and that person can now pass on that same comfort, God's comfort. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. Let's read on, let's read on. If we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. So you see, your own trouble and your own trials and your own tribulation is for your own comfort. Because when you come out of this and you are facing other trials and tribulation, you're going to remember what God has done to you. That God brought you out of this. So you know, God, I trust that you're going to brought me out of this one. So it's for your own comfort and your own salvation. And if we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which you experience when you patiently endure the same sufferings that we suffer, that Paul and his fellow that they suffered when they were in um, Achaeus, right? So let's read all that again. If we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. And if we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which you experience when you patiently endure. Patiently endure, wait. Be patient. God is going to bring you out of that pain. 
two months ago when I got the call on this day, the 14th of August, I just was not thinking about the 14th of October. In that moment, I was thinking about this very moment, the moment where I got that phone call and the moment where I went and I saw my brother. You know, I wasn't thinking about the 14th, honestly. I was just, you know, the Bible said there's a time for everything. Under the sun, there's a time to mourn. So I understood in that time of mourning that it was a time for mourn. I looked at my husband when he was mourning over his dad six days apart. It's our time to mourn. It was a Jackson's family time to mourn, right? So we endure it. So we were patient. I didn't think two months ago that I would just be here talking as if I didn't lose my brother. But patient, have patient. God is going to bring you out. Endure. Endure. Endure it. Just bear it. You're going to get out of it. Trust me. I've came out of many. I have came out of many situations. Pain and hurt where people offended me, where your closest family might offended you. It might be in the church. We're still human. The church is not perfect. And you know, we are the church. Going to church to this building is just a building that we, the people, the church, come together. Someone may hurt you. Don't walk away from God. Don't question God, but trust Him. And when you ask God, or before you open your mouth to ask, why me? Ask yourself this question. Why not me? Why not me? Because from my experiences, experiences, many have came to me when they know I've been into a certain situation. They came to me. How did you get out of this? By trusting God. Seek God. Fall on your face this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And just seek him. Forget about your pain that is in front of you. Forget about your sorrow. Forget about your hurt. This morning I'm asking you to die to self and let the Holy Spirit arise in you. The flesh, die to self and let God arise in your pain and your sorrow this morning. He is the light. He is the light this morning and you will get out of it. Amen. Let's continue this. So when you patiently endure the same suffering that we suffer, right? Our hope for you is unshaken. For we know that as you share in our suffering, the pain that they went through, that Paul went through. Paul and, and his fellows, they, 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 they went through it. He didn't say exactly what they went through, but he, he described it as we read on. That it was a grave situation. That it was a death situation. That they came upon death. But yet God delivered them. So I'm asking you to endure your pain this morning. And trust God. He said our hope for you is unshaken in verse 7. Um, for we know that as you share in our suffering. You will also share in our comfort. There you go again. If you realize you're hearing comfort, 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 you just keep, God is our comfort, right? In almost every scripture, you, you've seen that word comfort. God is going to comfort you in your situation right now as we speak in your home, in your car, wherever you are on the street, in that pain. Listen to me, brothers and sisters, God is your comfort. Sometimes we're looking for people to be our comfort. But God is our comfort. God wants you to trust him. God wants you to knock on his door this morning. God wants you to invite him in. Because don't you know he's right there? But he wants you to open your mouth and invite him in. Our God is not a fronted God. He wants you to invite him into your situation so that he can get you out. Call upon him right now. Call upon our the almighty God, our Father in heaven. And he will, he will bring you out. He will remove that pain. By next week, in two days, in, in a month, you might look back and be like, wow, I'm out of the tunnel. I'm out of the pain. Hallelujah. Give God glory this morning. Give God praise. Let's read on in verse 8. For we do not want you to be unaware, brothers, 
of the affliction we experience in Asia. So this is Paul speaking. He's telling you, hey, I went through it. We went through it. It wasn't easy. We came near death. So he doesn't want us to be unaware. He is now testifying in the beginning. If you go back to verse 3, he said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies. Because he came out, so now he's praising God. He's praising God, God of our comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction. So we may be able to comfort. Yes, I went back because Paul is praising God because he came out. So now he's telling you why he was praising God, why he's glorifying God, why he's praising his name. And he just want to praise God. What he's doing, he's thanking God. He's thanking God for bringing him out, for bringing them out of whatever that they went through. He didn't give us detail, but he praised God because he knows that God just brought them through. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go back down to eight. Right. He said, we do not want you to be unaware. This is why we should testify. Sometimes we feel like hiding our troubles. Maybe we are ashamed because of what trouble we went through, what pain, what hurt. No. Testify. It's a testimony. God brought you out so that you can testify and so that others can see his greatness. His greatness that, that he delivered you from it. It's not a secret. Don't be ashamed. I used to be ashamed. I used to be. I, Deaconess Christiana Jackson, used to be ashamed of some of the pain that I've been through. Yes, and the experience, the hurt. I didn't want no one to know. I was ashamed even in the church. I was divorced. I got a divorce. And I was ashamed. I was ashamed. But God brought us to. God is going to remove that. God is going to remove because we trust God. We seek him in our pain, in our troubles. Amen. We, we, we need to trust God. He said, for we were. Um, let's read on in verse 8. For we were so utterly burdened beyond our strength that we despaired of life itself. God is going to give you strength. They were at their wit's end. They didn't have any more strength. This is why we cannot look to ourselves. This is why we have to seek God so that he can give you the strength to endure, to have patient and endure your pain your afflicting your troubles endurance write it out trust god in the process and he's going to deliver you in due time maybe this is just your season and it's okay because again you're going to testify amen so indeed we felt that we had received a sentence of death my god my god do you know? We don't know the sentence of death. This is where he was at. How about they feel? They feel like that was it. That's it. Sentence of death. They're about to die. That's it. Right? But, but God. Someone typed this morning, but God. But God. God came through sometimes when we are at the very end and we feel like, oh, that's it. God shows up. Even in our finances, God is going to show up. In your marriage, God is going to show up. Don't give up. In my marriage right now, I felt like that's it. I'm going to get a divorce. That was it. But in the end, God shows up. Up and he brought back that love and that romance and that trust in my husband and I. Don't give up, brothers and sisters. Do not give up. You might feel like that's it. Like Paul, he felt like that's it. He received his death sentence. So, what death sentence are you feeling this morning? What end of the rope are you feeling this morning? Did you feel like you reached the end of the rope this morning? My God, brothers and sisters, I'm saying, trust God. He's going to show up right at the very last second. And I'm saying this with a smile because he has done it for me. He's done it for my family where we feel like it was doomsday. Last night we were having devotion. And one of the questions I asked, I said, is we were speaking about how family could not stand. A house cannot stand. 
if it's divided. And I turned to my children and I said, does this seem familiar to you? What example can you give? What example can you give when a divided house can stand? It was us. We were the example. It was us. Our own home. Where my husband and I was like at it with each other. And we feel like there's, 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 there's no ending. We were just at it. And I was like, that's it. My husband packed his clothes in the car in front of our house. And he said, that's it. Don't give up. Today we're enjoying our marriage. We're enjoying each other. Pray, my brothers and sisters. Pray. Today we have twins. What if we had given up? You know how many times we talk about that? Wow. Have we give up? We won't have been seeing our twins, our twins of faith and hope. Don't give up. In every trouble, in every trial, in every tribulation, I'm telling you, don't give up. You don't have food in your fridge? Don't give up. Your marriage is shaky? Guess what? Don't give up. Just invite God. Invite him in your situation. Put God in the center. You lost your mom, your brother, your sister. Still don't give up. Trust him. Trust that he knows best. Trust God. God is never. When we are away, we travel to our country, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And while we were there, we went to, you know, Barry to have the funeral arrangement for my father-in-law. And while we were there, <coughs> excuse me, this was after we buried my brother here in the U.S., we got a phone call from our children, our teenagers, that they got into an accident. And our car was total. It got written off, right? So that means the, the car, the, the airbags blow out. That's it. The car can no longer be used. And honestly, I was upset, you know, because, you know, my son disobedience, right? But when I called my woman, my God, Elder Sharon, when I called her, he said something to me, and that just changed the situation. It changed the dynamic. She said to me, she said, God, no, you couldn't handle any more debt. So he saved them. My God, that is so powerful. We couldn't handle any more debt. God is not going to give you no more than you can bear. That's my message. He's not going to give you no more than you can handle. In the process, while I'm still grieving my brother, while we're there burying my father in law, got a call. Imagine to get calls to see that your other three children was in the, we have five children. And to get a call to say that your other three children was in a car accident and the, the, the car is total and they walked out of it. My God, they walked out of it. Not a scratch. They walked out of it. No broken bones. Praise be to God. Glorify him. It switched because I'm like, it could have been different. We could have gotten a call that all three of our children didn't make it. There was an accident. But God knows that He that we just couldn't handle it. So he saved our children. Praise be to God. So God is not going to give you no more than you can bear. And you see, just like how... Yes, it's in the scripture, but my pastor's wife, my beautiful, my my first lady, she reminded me of the word of God. And, and and that blessed me and that it actually calmed me down. And I I I turned my anger into praise. And I and I and I said to my children, it's okay. You are alive. I'm speaking to you. Yes, we lost the car. That's okay. We can get back another car. But you guys are still in the land of the living. So I still have to say, so God is not going to, God knows you, you know. He knows all about you from your head to your toe. He knows everything about you. So he knows that whatever you're going through right now, then you can handle this. You got this, brothers and sisters. You can come out of this and you are going to come out of this. Because I know the God that we serve. We serve a true and living God. Amen. Um, that, that was in, in nine. Indeed, we felt that we had received a sentence of death. But that was to make us rely not on 
ourselves. So Paul is now testifying. He's now realizing that the sentence of death, whatever grave situation that they were going through, growing through, it wasn't for them to depend on themselves. And sometimes we try to do it all by ourselves, but we cannot. But it was for us to trust God, right? Let's read on. He said, he delivered us from such a deadly peril. My God. And he will deliver us. So he's saying that God delivered them from the sentence of death, the deadly peril. And he will deliver us. Meaning he will continue. Because he did it and he will do it again. Because our life is not perfect. We're not perfect, you know. But we're going to go through something. And as our man of God says, Pastor Leslie, we are going to grow. We're growing through it. When someone asks you, you know, and you're saying, oh, I'm going through something. No, 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 stop. I'm growing through this. Meaning you're going to get out of it. You are going to get out of this this morning. Hallelujah. This afternoon. Hallelujah. Verse 10. He delivered us from such a deadly period and he will deliver us. On him, we have set our hope that he will deliver us again. Hallelujah. He is going to deliver you again and again and again. Deliverance is your portion this morning. So if you're going, growing through something, trust God. I know that he's going to deliver you just like he did for Paul. He would do it for you. And he did it for me. And I know there's more for him to bring me through. He's going to bring you out of it. He's going to bring you out of it. So this morning I'm saying, even when it seems so gloomy, even if you open, your your, your, your eyes are open, but it, it looks like if your eyes are closed because it's just darkness around you and situations are hitting you back to back. Trust him. Rest in him. Know who God is. He is the I am. The I am. He is Emmanuel. And the meaning of Emmanuel, God with us. He's with you. He's with you in every step of the way. And this morning I'm asking you to seek him. Trust him in your in your sorrow. Trust him in your pain. It's not too hard for God. Nothing is too hard for God. Nothing. So as we wrap up this morning or this afternoon in India, I'm asking you to trust God. I'm asking you to testify. Testify. Don't be ashamed of your troubles. Don't be ashamed of your trials, your affliction. Don't be ashamed of it. God have done a new thing in your life. Testify. For those of you who who have this dark secret that you've been through and you're shame? No, get up and pick that mic up and start to testify of God's greatness. This is why he was with you. This is why, how he comforts you. There's someone else out there who's waiting to hear it. Right here, this is Paul's testifying. This is his testimony. Amen? So I'm saying, so if God brought through it through, testify about it. And don't be ashamed of it. And if you are in there, rest in God. God is going to bring you out. Rest in him. Put all, all of your trials and your tribulation and your pain and your sorrow. Put it all to Jesus this morning. Put it all. Put it all on him. Yes, give it up. Why are you asking God to step in and you still worried about it? Let it go. Let it go. Whatever you're holding on to that's causing you pain, let it go. My brothers and sisters, I'm saying to let it go and let God, let God take over. Hallelujah. 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 Let him take over this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Give him praise. Praise him through your sorrow. Praise him through your pain. This morning, I'm praising him through my pain that I lost my brother today, two months. The two months of his death, I'm praising him. I'm glorifying him because I know he knows best, my brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. 
Let's pray. Father God, we thank you this morning. We thank you for the word of comfort this morning, oh God. I ask, oh God, that you reach out and touch every home this morning that's in affliction this morning, every individual that is in pain this morning, that is suffering, oh God. Remember who, remind them of who you are. Remind them of your greatness this morning, oh God. Oh God, I ask, oh God, that they seek you first this morning and everything will be added on to them, dear God. We ask, oh God, that you give them the strength, oh God, that they are growing through this this morning. And God, I ask, oh God, that you give them the strength to seek you, to knock on the door, and that they will invite you in, invite you into their pain, invite you into the sorrow, invite you, God, into their home this morning. Oh God, I pray, oh God, that you comfort them. They may not see the light, but I know that the light is there. Oh God, you're just waiting. You're waiting for them to knock. You're waiting for them to die to self. You're waiting for them there, God. Oh God, and I pray, oh God, that you put it on their heart to trust you with all of their heart and with all of their soul and with all of their might this morning, oh God. Just that you're going to deliver them, oh God. Deliverance is their portion this morning. Hallelujah, God. We praise your holy name through it all. Through it all, we give you praise. We magnify your holy name this morning. Oh God, and we thank you. We thank you for life. We thank you for grace. We thank you, God, that we're still in the land of the living this morning. Hallelujah. Praise. Let's praise God. Let's praise him. Lift up your hands and praise him. Yes, you're hurting. Yes, you're in pain, but praise him this morning. Hallelujah. Give God God, praise. Give him the glory. Glorify his holy name. Oh, God, trust. Let them trust, oh, God. Let them trust you, Father. Hallelujah, God. And, Father, we give you a praise, and we give you a glory, and we give you honor. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just praise God. Hallelujah this morning. Thank you. Yeah, praise God. That's Wonderful praising, God yes. of God. Wonderful Hallelujah. God of God. It was a blessing. It was a blessing. In trials Hallelujah. and temptation, we had to trust God. It's yes. wonderful. It's a wonderful and encouraging words. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you once again. Okay. Uh, we want to invite you once again to praise the word of God and uh, encourage us with the word of God. Amen. Amen. Thanks Amen. for having us. Thanks for having me. Amen. 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 Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay,